Because the configuration of groups around a stereo center is an important aspect of organic structure, we want a way to be able to name configurations. In this video, we're going to cover two naming conventions for configurations about tetrahedral and trigonal stereo centers, the RS and EZ conventions. To name tetrahedral configurations, we make use of the so-called RS system. The big idea here is to use a standard procedure to prioritize groups around the stereo center and then place the molecule in a standard orientation and use conventions to apply the R or S label. You'll hear these referred to, by the way, in a more formal sense as stereochemical descriptors or configurational descriptors since they describe the configuration at a stereo center. The first step of this process involves assigning a priority to each group bound to the stereo center, and we use some rules to determine what has highest and lowest priority. The first is that higher atomic number means higher priority, and in many cases you can use this rule alone to decide what has highest priority. For example, here we see we have a hydrogen, an oxygen, and two carbons bound to this central stereo center. Clearly then, oxygen, which has the highest atomic number of the atoms attached to this stereo center, will be associated with the highest priority, which we'll label with number one. Hydrogen has the smallest atomic number of the atoms bound to the stereo center, and so it's position four. How do we distinguish between the two carbons, CH3, and this carbon that's part of a benzene ring? The rule here is that for equivalent atoms, we keep looking at the atoms connected to the equivalent atoms until we find a first point of difference. Returning to the first idea, at that first point of difference to decide which group as a whole has higher priority. For example, in comparing the methyl to the benzene ring, we can see that the carbon of the benzene ring is bonded to four carbons. Really, it's two single bonds and a double bond, but we treat the double bond as two single bonds for the purpose of this convention, and so that carbon is bound to four other carbons. The methyl carbon, on the other hand, is bound to one other carbon and three hydrogens. And so the first point of difference is the hydrogen in the methyl group where we see a carbon in the benzene group. Because carbon has a higher atomic number than hydrogen, the benzene group gets higher priority than the methyl group. Once we've prioritized each of the groups attached to the stereo center, everything else in the molecule becomes irrelevant. And so we can simplify this picture down into the tetrahedral stereo center just with the numbers attached. And I like to do this especially in complicated molecules where there's a lot of extra crap that doesn't really matter, we can simply lay down the numbers here to determine the RS designator without worrying about the specific atoms involved once we've made the prioritization. Notice that in the two examples on the left and right of this slide, we should expect different stereochemical descriptors since the priorities are oriented differently about the central stereo center. In the molecule on the right, the two group is coming out towards us, but in the molecule on the left, the number two group is going back away from us, for example. Once we've done this prioritization step, the next step is to place the molecule into a standard orientation. By convention, the standard orientation involves placing the lowest priority group in the back, pointing away from us or into the screen. In orienting the molecule in this way, what we're really doing is generating a Newman projection looking along the bond between the stereo center and the lowest priority group. In other words, looking along this direction. Molecular models for each of these molecules can help us see what this looks like. In this molecule on the left, when we move that carbon-hydrogen bond back so that we're looking along it in a Newman projection type view, of course, there's nothing in the back since the hydrogen is just sitting there. And what we see on the front carbon is an angle of about 120 degrees between the three other groups attached to that carbon. We can do the same thing in the structure on the right, and we get a very similar looking Newman projection type view. Let's remind ourselves briefly of the priorities that we assigned before. One for the hydroxyl oxygen, two for the phenyl ring, and three for the methyl group, and same over here. And we can also draw a more general picture for these Newman projections using just the prioritization numbers. In the case on the right, we have one pointing up and to the left, two pointing up and to the right, and three pointing down in a Y-type shape, roughly speaking, for this structure on the right. In the structure on the left, we have group number one pointing up and to the right, group number two pointing up and to the left, and group number three pointing down. 
This perspective helps emphasize the fact that the configurations of these two molecules are different, since, of course, the carbon-4 bonds are aligned in this Newman projection, and the carbon-3 bonds are also aligned. But group 2 and group 1 are located in different positions in these two molecules, indicating a difference in configuration. The final step in determining the stereochemical descriptor here is to identify the sense of rotation in this standard view from highest to lowest priority, or group number one to group number three. In the molecule on the left, that direction of rotation goes this way, from one to two to three. In the molecule on the right, that direction of rotation goes this way, from one to two to three. Notice that the sense of rotation in the left-hand molecule is counterclockwise. This points us to the S configuration, whereas the sense of rotation in the right-hand molecule is clockwise, and this points us to the R configuration. And so while both of these molecules are 1-phenylethanol, as the titles of the windows show us, the molecule on the left is S-1-phenylethanol, while the molecule on the right is R-1-phenylethanol. Let's practice with another visual example of the RS convention in action. The molecule shown here is glyceraldehyde, and it's the simplest sugar. It has one stereocenter at its central carbon, and this stereocenter may have the R or S configuration. To determine what the configuration is in this case, we follow the procedure that we just outlined. First, we prioritize the groups. The hydroxyl group gets highest priority because oxygen has a higher atomic number than the hydrogen and carbons bound to the stereocenter. The carbons get priorities 2 and 3, with the doubly bound carbon getting higher priority than the singly bound carbon, since each carbon-oxygen bond within the double bond counts as two single bonds for the purpose of this convention. And so the first point of difference here is between a hydrogen in the carbon in the bottom right and an oxygen and the carbon at the top. So this aldehyde functional group gets priority two, and the alcohol carbon gets priority three. The hydrogen, which is already sort of pointed toward the back, gets priority four. Our line of sight in determining the sense of rotation that tells us R or S is this yellow line right here. And we're going to position our eye in order to make the RS determination right here and look along the direction of the yellow line. When we do that, the structure looks like this. And in this viewpoint, we see that from highest to lowest priority, the sense of rotation is clockwise. That indicates that this molecule is R glyceraldehyde. The configuration at its only stereocenter is R. Trigonal configurations, such as those associated with alkenes and amines, are named using the EZ system. And E and Z are really a generalization of the trans cis naming system that we've already seen, with E essentially standing for trans and Z standing for cis. The method here still relies on prioritization of the groups attached to the stereocenters, but the difference now is that we're going to assign priorities separately to the two atoms of the double bond. We're going to assign one and two at one of the atoms and one and two at the other atom. Let's go ahead and draw in the implied hydrogens in these structures to clarify their geometries. The rules here are exactly the same as before. Higher atomic number means higher priority, so carbon gets a higher priority than hydrogen, for example. And where two atoms match in atomic number, we continue along the chains of each group until we reach the first point of difference. In this case, the first point of difference is between a hydrogen associated with the methyl group and a carbon associated with this cyclopentane ring of this other substituent. Because carbon has a higher atomic number than hydrogen, the cyclopentane ring gets higher priority than the methyl group in this molecule. And notice that we've numbered one and two here, since we're prioritizing these groups separately from those on the other carbon, for reasons that will become clear in a second. Once we've made these prioritizations, we examine the relative orientations of the higher priority groups in a trans-cis sense. If the higher priority groups are cis, as they are in the structure on the left, we refer to the configuration as Z. One easy way to remember this is that in the Z configuration, the higher priority groups are on Z, Zame, Zide of the double bond. If the higher priority groups are located in a trans relationship, as we see in this right-hand molecule, we refer to the configuration as E. The actual origins of these terms for the intellectually curious come from German, with E standing for Entgegen, or apart, and Z standing for Zusammen, or together.